Good morning and welcome to worship. It's August and the summer's passing quite quickly. Some of you have been back at worship in church for three weeks now and some have yet to venture out and the hill head has yet to start its starting date on which they'll return to church. So whether you've been to church or not, you will continue to be welcome to share this online service as we continue to study Ephesians together. The theme of our passage today is the relationship between parents and children. So perhaps we should begin with an old-fashioned children's hymn. It's an old-fashioned one, one I haven't sung in a long time. The recording that's playing in the background is by Elaine and Derek. You may remember them. And of course, Helen and Derek will be singing along too. <laughs> There's a friend for little children. It's a friend for little children above the bright blue sky a friend who never changes whose love can never die unlike our friends by nature who change with changing years this friend is always worthy the precious name he bears. There's a home for little children above the bright blue sky where Jesus reigns in glory, a home of peace and joy. No home on earth is like it, or can with it compare. For everyone is happy, nor could be happier there. There's a crown for little children above the bright blue sky and all who look to Jesus shall wear it by and by a crown of brightest glory which he will then bestow on all who love the Saviour and walk with him below. There's a song for little children above the bright blue sky and a harp of sweetest music and palms of victory all all above is treasured and found in christ alone oh come dear little children that all may be your own Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you, oh, we are all your children and that your promises are for all who follow you. You are the perfect loving Father 
the pattern of parenting for us all. Forgive us when we have been imperfect in showing an example to the children among us. Forgive us whether we are parents or not, if our church life and our conversations with and in front of the children and young people in the church and the community do not honour your name. Grant us your spirit to show love and grace to those who are learning and growing and wisdom to encourage, not discourage, their faltering steps. For we falter too. So hear these our prayers as we join them together in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have three lessons today, but let's start with the passage from Ephesians, picking up from where we left last week, talking about husbands and wives. Now it's children and parents. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and you may well live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And then from Matthew's Gospel, two passages. Firstly, chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have, than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell of fire. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. And then in chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. Then little children were being brought to him in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them and went on his way. Praise be to God for his glorious gospel. As in the previous passage on husbands and wives, 
all of these sections are dependent on the precept of mutual submission to each other that was found at the very beginning in chapter 5 verse 21. And that itself was seen as a way of working out our lives being lived filled with the Spirit. And so often in Paul, when we read him, we need to read where he is differing from the prevailing culture of the day. Just as in last week's, we see that he gave women a much greater place and his, his advice to men as to how they should love and lay down their lives for their wife were such that they were at great odds with the society in which he lived. And we remember that it is Paul who said in Christ there is neither male nor female. And that's how we see it worked out in the place he gave women in the church and the way he speaks to and about women in his letters. So here we find he deems children where they have their own separate injunction as people with rights and identity as of themselves that's not the way the world saw them. Most of the household codes simply have injunctions to the parents as to what they're to do about their children. But he begins with the children. The children come first. And he addresses fathers, but we might be put off by that. The Greek word for fathers can often be used to mean both the fathers and the mothers. It's the parents he's speaking to. And he's saying, don't provoke your children. An unusual and welcome reminder. But a reminder that there are limits to what parents can do and they need to be careful how they provoke their children. And notice that's where he begins. He begins with what parents shouldn't do as if that might have been a common practice. And then he tells them to bring them up in the old-fashioned words of the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But what he means, he means act to them the way the Lord has acted to you, with grace and love and forgiveness and leading and example and teaching. And here, here we see this counter-cultural way of expressing the relationship between children and parents that Paul is advocating. But it's not the least surprising because just as Jesus treated women differently, so in the passages we've read we see that he also had a great place for children. The disciples wanted the children to be sent away but Jesus would have none of it. He says, let the children come to me for of such is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> so many people think children are a nuisance. I'm old enough to remember people being telling us that children should be seen and not heard. I remember being put upstairs when there were visitors in the house. Not, We hung over the balcony, the banisters, to see who had come in. We tried to listen through the floor to see if there was any interesting conversation. We were often left out of it. But Jesus says, don't leave them out. Let them come to me. For as such is the kingdom of heaven. And totally counterculturally, not only does he say let them come, but he takes time to bless each one of them individually, laying his hands on them. For each child matters. So often I hear people talking about the church of tomorrow, our children, our young people of the church of tomorrow, as if, you know, they're in waiting there. When we can't do it anymore, they'll take over. No, they're not. They're the church of today. That's actually the whole significance of the baptism of the children of believing parents. They're already part of the church. They're members. And their needs are just as important, if not more important, than those of us who are older. Children's implicit trust in Matthew 18 is the pattern, the example of the kingdom of heaven. He's calling on us with all our cynicism and all our 
doubt and everything else that gets in as we grow older, to trust him as implicitly as the child trusts a loving parent. Rather than children learning from us, Jesus suggests we should learn from them what our attitude should be. And the humility of the child who waits. That's real greatness, he says. But watch out. Oh, I can't be bothered with children. Someone, I can't have them about the place. We need to watch because if we reject children, we also reject Jesus. He says, whoever rejects one of these little ones rejects me. You know, we need to be very careful in our conversations that we don't speak over the heads of the children, ignoring them when we talk to the parents. Because they're just as precious and just as important. And they need to be talked to properly not talked down to but talked to as we would to an adult and then you find in Matthew 18 some of the harshest words in scripture they're almost hard to read he says if anyone hurts one of these little children be better that a millstone was put round their neck and they were drowned in the depths of the sea you see when we make it difficult for children to understand the truth of God's love because our behaviour and our words or actions harm the children and prevent them seeing the grace that is in Jesus Christ then we come under his condemnation. Of course when we read the passage we immediately think oh this is all about today. It's about the stories now publicly revealed though I have to say we're always there of child sex abuse, child grooming, child neglect and child physical and mental harm. And yes, of course, it is about those things. But they're simply the, the harsh side of much, much more. Its remit is much larger, larger than these extremes. Its warning is for all our behaviours and actions. Helen regularly supervises a number of counsellors who work in schools. Much of what she hears would make you weep. And so often as, as we pray with people in prayer ministry, what comes up in the conversation with God is an incident, a time, a story, an episode of childhood or teenage years where the growing personality has been stunted, warped, or lied to, or because of the behaviour of the authority figure, the teacher, the parent, the neighbour. The person themselves has started to believe lies about themselves. And even as an adult, those lies still there lie there. This passage is serious stuff. We need to take it seriously. And it's not just for ourselves as parents and grandparents, though of course it is. Aunts and uncles, grandparents, godparents. But for every one of us who call ourselves Christians. In the community, in schools and sports organisations, in everywhere we work. Whether we're in the shops or on the streets of the town. We need to lift up those young people and children that the world has crushed. And we need not to be part of the crushing, but part of the encouraging and lifting up the blessing. Our actions should be like Jesus blessing children by laying our hands on their head. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Today we pray for all who work with children and young people. We pray for teachers, classroom assistants, dinner ladies, and all who seek to draw out of our children and young people 
the gifting and personality you have given to them. We pray for those who work for charities, both in Ireland, North and the Republic, and across the world to rescue, feed, educate and speak up for children. We pray for foster parents, social workers, education welfare officers and doctors and nurses whose work is to mend, help and heal where life has gone wrong. We pray for parents and grandparents, particularly for those under stress because of poverty, overwork or fear of redundancy. We pray to that Father would bless all the children of our community to lead and guide your people in inner shown, to befriend and encourage and display the love of Christ to the children in our midst. Finally, we pray for families where children are seriously ill or where children have died far too soon. Hold them up and bring your healing to them all. In Jesus' name. Amen. We conclude our service this morning with Matt Redman's song based on Psalm 103. It's often called 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Let's join together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, there's a new day dawning. Sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before you Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and your soul heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless, bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul his holy name sing like never before oh my soul I'll worship your holy
my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, I worship your of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love, love of God, God and the fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with, with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. Next week we'll look at relationships at work from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 5 to 9. It's about slaves and masters but it's about relationships at work. Till then, God go with you.